you want to strategically evoke emotion in your viewers. I don't care what type of games you're playing or videos you're posting. If your viewers aren't in a different emotional state by the end of watching your video, you're always gonna be one of the 98%. You know, those people who upload scores of good videos, but they all just get a grand total of four views each. So I wanna show you a highly complicated, but unbelievably powerful technique the 2% use to evoke emotion, drastically boost their average view duration and get more watch hours. And this tactic comes from the age old practice of storytelling. Most YouTube educators who know anything about YouTube harp on about the importance of stories. And there's a good reason for that. Humans think in stories. When a story has its hooks into us, it's very hard for us to, as humans, to not want to know how that story ends. But also, just like a good movie, we don't want to just know how it ends. Otherwise, everyone would just skip to the end of the movie. We want to know how it was that ending came about. How it was that the hero or the characters ended up in the situation that they did at the climax and finale of the movie. And so that's why it's super powerful for YouTube because if you can turn your videos or even just little segments of your videos and interject micro stories, it really improves your average view duration because viewers not only want to figure out how those little stories or that one big story ends, but they also want to see what built up to that ending. And so what I want to do is talk about storytelling. I want to give you a framework for how it is to apply stories to your videos because often people like these gurus, they're like, oh, you need to get good at storytelling. But what even is storytelling? How does it even work? How do you get good at it? And by the way, even if you create a type of content that doesn't naturally lend itself to storytelling, you can take little elements of stories and apply them to your videos, or even just elements of this process and apply them to your videos to level up your average view duration and get more viewers watching all the way to the end. So don't worry, your content doesn't perfectly fit within the mold of this particular formula. But anyway, my best definition of what a story is, is a hero encountering conflict while striving for an important goal. There's a hero, there's the goal plus the stakes, it's the conflict, and then there's the conclusion. Even if you just understand how to really get just this really fundamental basic framework, you're gonna be like ahead of 99% of YouTubers out there and you're gonna be at a ridiculous advantage. So the first one is the hero. The hero is potentially the most important yet misunderstood step for your story. And there can be multiple heroes, it's possible, or the hero can even be a thing or a specific collection of things. But most of the time it's a lot easier to just to have one hero. And often even if you have multiple heroes, viewers will end up picking one who tends to be the standout hero and root for that person more than the others anyway, just like you would with a movie. Everyone pretty much knows though that a story has a hero. What a lot of people miss is the fact that you actually need to get viewers to care about your hero. Otherwise, just having a hero is meaningless. You actually need to get your viewers to invest in the hero. If that's you, you need to get them to actually care about what happens to you. How you can do that is by becoming someone that viewers could actually care about. So there are a couple of categories that often popular heroes can fit into that make viewers actually care about them and how they progress through the story. The first is a victim. The hero has some sort of wound. They're at some sort of major disadvantage disadvantage and therefore the viewers all of a sudden feel a bit of a connection to them either they relate to them or they just feel sorry for them and they're rooting for them the next one is the hero is in jeopardy so maybe they're not a victim but if they don't achieve their goal very soon they will become a victim the next one is that they're likable maybe they're just a really nice character maybe they're a genuine character maybe they're relatable to the viewers or maybe they evoke emotion which is a super important thing that we'll talk about later on in this video maybe they're funny it's one of the easiest ones is if uh, the hero is a funny person, often people will laugh, relate, there'll be an emotional connection there and all of a sudden they care what actually happens to that hero. And lastly, there is powerful. If your hero is incredibly powerful, we often root for that powerhouse. We root for the person who is all powerful, who has these powers because it's cool to watch them achieve amazing feats. So I want to bring these high level concepts back down to reality and give you examples of how to apply them using examples from my own journey. These are real videos from my very first channel. Some of the first videos I ever created. And I want to show you how I would have designed them in hindsight and implemented this story process to them because they absolutely sucked. They got like 20 views and the series died very quickly. Hey guys, Silky Whisperer here and welcome back to another Hypixel Build Battle episode. Ah! 
<laughs> so these videos are build battle videos. The character in this video or the hero in this video was me and I was trying to win the build battle. The mishap I had was that I simply just introduced myself. It's like, hey guys, I'm Marcus or I'm Silky Whisper or whatever I said. And today we're going to be doing a build battle. So what? Who cares? I didn't actually get the viewers to care about me. I could have shared that I had never won a build battle before. It was incredibly embarrassing and that in this video, I was going to change that. I'm the underdog. Root for me. I also could have been funny and you can stack these two things. I could have been a victim who was also funny and just made people like me that way. And if I had done just even one, but both of those things together, it would have made these videos so much more interesting because all of a sudden people would have actually cared about how they ended out as opposed to just me being a faceless, nameless person playing a build battle just like that thousands of other people online. So we talked about the hero. Let's talk about the goal and the stakes. See, your hero needs to be striving for something. There needs to be something that they desire and that something needs to be unique or challenging. See, if your character is striving for something that loads and loads and loads of people have achieved and done before, it's not unique. You'd lose a bit of interest in your viewers because there's no desire in the viewers to see you actually achieve that thing because they've seen it done thousands and thousands and thousands of times before. Heck, they might've even done it themselves and the interest then just wanes. So you want it to be something that's unique and challenging. Goal is one part of this though. So you need that goal. There needs to be that aim. Otherwise it's just drifting around aimlessly, but there's also stakes to make the goal more meaningful. See the stakes are what happens if you succeed or more importantly, what happens if you fail. So if I tell you that my goal is to win a game of Mario Kart, who cares? But if my goal is to win a game of Mario Kart and if I don't win, I will go skydiving and I have an incredible fear of heights. All of a sudden I've added those stakes to that goal and that goal becomes a lot more interesting. So how I would have applied that to this particular video series, I could have done something like win a build battle on pro difficulty. So I'm versus all the pro players in 24 hours. So remember I'm the victim. I've never won a build battle before. I'm terrible at building. And not only am I the victim, but now I'm going in and trying to win a pro build battle and I need to do it in 24 hours. Now, previously my stakes were none. So if I didn't win, nothing happened. But if I introduce some stakes, such as I won't stop playing these build battles until I win one. And if I don't win in 24 hours, then I'm going to give my Minecraft account away with all my realms and skins and worlds to one of my viewers for free. All of a sudden things just got a bit more interesting. But even if your game doesn't have like a clear winning or losing aspect to win involved, or your video doesn't have a clear winning or losing aspect to win involved, you can pick an arbitrary goal and increase the stakes. So if you fail, all of a sudden it becomes important. Like that Mario Kart example I gave you earlier. Or you can pick an arbitrary goal that even if it doesn't have incredibly high stakes, it's a super impressive one or challenging one. It's like often you'll see those players who create, I survived a hundred days in X game videos. The fact that you survived a hundred days on that super hard difficulty draws people in because it might be a lot more challenging. And that's just an arbitrary number, like a hundred days versus 101 days versus 99 days versus 89 days. It doesn't actually matter that much, but it's planting that flag and setting that arbitrary goal that makes achieving that goal somewhat interesting. There's something for the viewer to anticipate that the hero is trying to achieve. The next step in this process is the conflict. The conflict is where the meat of your video actually happens. And conflict is the challenges or the setbacks your hero encounters as they pursue that goal that they're trying to achieve, right? Because we talked about this earlier, the goal needs to be challenging because if it wasn't challenging, then there'd be no conflict. It'd be super easy to achieve. There'd be no challenges, no setbacks, no obstacles, and the video wouldn't really be that interesting. An important thing to note in the conflict domain is that you want the conflict to increase as time goes onwards. Because if the conflict is really high and really intense and the hero is encountering a lot of obstacles and challenges and all that kind of thing at the start, then as the video goes on, it just kind of dwindles away and gets easier and easier and easier. Like the viewer is going to get bored. I do want to mention like a caveat here, just because you generally want your conflict to get more challenging as the video goes on, it doesn't mean the beginning should be not challenging at all. If you do that, then people will leave and they'll never end up at the super challenging bit. So to apply, the example that I've been talking about. On the previous versions of these videos, there wasn't very much conflict because there was not really much of a goal. It was just to win a build battle. There wasn't really much of a gradual building conflict in these videos. I just kind of played a bunch of games, just recorded them, stitched together the interesting moments and it was just some games I won. But still, there wasn't really a lead in to more and more conflict like we're talking about. So what I could have done, I would have tried to create more emotional conflict, which would have happened naturally because I have a more clearly defined goal of achieving a win 
win on pro difficulty in 24 hours. I've got the stakes of what happens if I don't win. The viewer can see more of the backstory and so there's more conflict there. On the one hand, gold. On the other hand, painful, agonizing failure. There's a time component, of course, we talked about time. I've also introduced the overall time component of there being only 24 hours to achieve this goal of, of winning a build battle on pro difficulty. But as the video goes on and I'm losing, losing more and more matches and I'm just sitting there for hours and hours on end playing this game, trying to get a win. And this would be naturally induced because of the situation, but I could start complaining about getting hungry. I could start complaining about being tired. I could mention maybe that I have work tomorrow and that if I have to pull an all nighter playing this game, not only am I going to lose my Minecraft account, but that I'm gonna be like knackered for work the next day. I could engineer the situation so that things are gonna get more and more difficult for me, which would naturally result in the video getting more and more interesting over time. And then you have the conclusion, which is the outcome of what it is that you're striving for. So in this case, obviously I'm striving to win the build battle and it would be either I win the build battle or I fail my goal and then I have to give away my Minecraft account and whatever. Obviously from a video's point of view, it'd be more interesting if I achieve that goal. But even if I lose the goal, it's still interesting for people to see me suffer and lose all my account and all that kind of thing. A lot of you might be looking at this formula and thinking there's no way that your videos will ever fit into it. And naturally they probably won't. So your job is to kind of engineer the situation and think about your video ideas so that they can fit into this kind of situation and they become a lot more interesting. So do some pre-planning. Put yourself in situations where this process that we've talked about is likely to play out. Engineer video ideas that kind of fit in with this process. Or if the videos you record are a lot more sporadic, you can maybe massage the videos in the edit to make them fit a formula kind of like this a lot better than they would fit if you just randomly stitched together random moments throughout the video. And all of this leads to helping your average view duration get better. That's why I think you should watch this video next. In it, I'm gonna share some of my favorite editing techniques and principles that will help you edit stories in a better way and improve your average view duration. Click it now.